This is the Tau Ceti system. It's located about 12 light years from Earth, one of the closest systems to our own. At the center is a K-type star, cooler and more stable than our sun. Its quiet star, steady light, and low radiation make it a good place to begin our search. It produces less ultraviolet radiation and fewer solar flares, which helps keep nearby planets safe. These kinds of star burns fuel slowly, meaning it can stay stable for tens of billions of years. That gives planets around it more time for life to evolve, slowly and without interruption. Tau Ceti has at least four known planets. One of them, Tau Ceti F, is in the habitable zone, the right distance for liquid water. Over time, many comets and asteroids have likely been cleared naturally or pulled into larger bodies. This makes Tau Ceti one of the most stable systems known a good place for life to develop safely. Tau Ceti has at least four confirmed planets. One of them is in the habitable zone, the region where liquid water could exist. Tau Ceti F. The planets orbit in stable circular paths and the system has been calm for billions of years. Tau Ceti F is a rocky super-Earth, about 1.7 times larger than Earth. It has stronger gravity and a thicker atmosphere, which traps heat and protects life. Although the planet receives less energy from its star than Earth gets from the Sun, the dense atmosphere keeps that heat in for a long time. This creates a higher average surface temperature than Earth, warm enough for liquid water everywhere. There are no freezing regions on the planet. This condition has been stable for billions of years, allowing life to grow and adapt without interruption. The planet has two moons that create strong and regular tides. Instead of deep oceans, shallow water moves back and forth across giant tidal plains, covering and uncovering land with each cycle. Over time, this has made the surface smooth, soft, and rich in nutrients, a perfect base for a peaceful, diverse ecosystem. At night, exotic compounds rise into Tau Ceti F's cold upper atmosphere. There, they react with trace gases like methane and ozone. These chemical reactions release energy as light, forming vast, glowing arcs that illuminate the sky like alien rainbows. On Earth, evolution is shaped by pressure, by predators, competition, and mass extinction. But Tau Ceti F is different. It has had stable conditions for billions of years. There are no major predators, no mass die-offs, and no constant survival threats. The planet has a rich, stable energy supply from its atmosphere, star, and shallow oceans. Food is easier to find. Conditions don't change quickly. This abundance led life to take a slower, more peaceful path. On other worlds, species fight for resources, but fighting, chasing, and competing all waste energy. Here, evolution favored the opposite, harmony, rhythm, and efficiency. This is not a world where the strongest survive. Creatures learn to communicate, to share space, and to avoid unnecessary conflict. Most species use light, motion, or touch to interact, not violence. Let's begin this story with one of the smallest life form, the bacteria that builds the foam. Life on Tau Ceti F began with a simple organism, Sparvian, a bacteria that lives in shallow, mineral-rich waters. As Sparvian grows, it produces a special substance, Sparvian's foam. This foam forms underwater, trapping minerals and light gases like methane. When it reaches the surface, the foam is exposed to UV light from Tau Ceti, which activates a natural light reactive compound inside it. This causes the foam to harden, forming a solid but extremely lightweight structure. Because of trapped gases and low density, parts of the foam begin to float upward, rising gently into the sky. These floating structures are called flumari. They drift in the upper atmosphere, slowly rotating, carried by wind currents. Over time, flumari become stable sky habitats, filled with sunlight and protected from the tides below. What began as a bacterial byproduct becomes the foundation for entire ecosystems in the air. In the tidal plains of Tau CDF, some creatures have evolved a unique way to live and to fly. These are the kite worms, or Kairavi. They spend most of their lives underground, growing long, flexible tails. Their heads are wide and flat, shaped like a kite, 
and their skin is soft and responsive to wind and pressure. During special seasons, when temperature, wind, and tides align, Karavi emerge from the soil. They lift into the air, using their kite-shaped heads to catch gentle, stable winds. They begin a mating dance in the sky, spiraling, twisting, and weaving through the atmosphere. But as they dance, their bodies often tangle. Once tangled, they cannot return to the ground. So they release their tails, long thread-like sections filled with eggs. The tails fall to the surface and settle into the sand. When the next high tide arrives, the eggs awaken and a new generation of Karavi is born. High above Tau Seti F, floating foam islands, something glides into view. It moves without wings, carried by the dense air of Tau Seti F. It circles once, then descends. This is the Nimvar, a creature drawn not by prey, but by gas. Nimvars have spiral-shaped bodies adapted for life in the sky. They do not have wings. Instead, they glide using the planet's thick atmosphere and stable wind layers. Tau Ceti F has higher air pressure and gentle, consistent air currents, which allow creatures to float and maneuver with less energy. Nimvars rise and fall by adjusting the spacing of their helix fin. A wider spiral lifts them upward. A tighter coil lets them descend. No flapping. No effort. Just quiet precision in the sky. With practiced ease, the Nimvar lands and pierces the foam. Methane escapes, not into the air, but across its body. In seconds, the gas triggers a reaction. Parasites release. Membranes shed. The Nimvar is clean again. Now the foam loses its weight. Bit by bit, it begins to descend. This descent is useful to other species, especially the intelligent dwellers, who have learned to guide bulge-limbed and control when a flumari returns to the ground. In the twilight forests of Tau CDF, trees grow without leaves. Instead, they stretch out branch-like structures that act as solar panels, and underground, they form resinous root fibers, long, translucent channels used for nutrient flow. One creature has learned to use these fibers to send messages. It is called the Tyralunia. Tyralunia climbs into the trees and wraps its flexible limbs around the roots. It uses photon pulses to send information through the fibers, like signals through glass. To do this, Tyralunia sometimes taps or gently scores the root fibers using the ridged edge of its tail. This does not harm the tree. Instead, it actually helps. The interaction stimulates new root growth and improves the tree's ability to find better paths through the soil. Inside its body, Tyralunia stores compressed gas in a central sac. It creates tiny controlled explosions to flash out precise light pulses, a kind of coded visual language. These signals travel through the resin, crossing entire groves. Tyralunia doesn't speak. It connects, and the forest responds. On the tidal plains of Tau Ceti F, where water flows in and out every day, one strange creature has evolved to reshape the ground itself. It is called... Bulge-limbed. Its body is round, covered in soft bulges with sticky limbs. These limbs grab branches, tree trunks, or even rocks, allowing the creature to swing and climb through the low forests. When needed, it can also roll down hills, curling into a sphere to move quickly with gravity. But the bulge-limbed plays a much bigger role than movement. When it digs into wet, mineral-rich sand, its body releases a semi-liquid substance, a secretion that slowly reacts with the sand and hardens over time. This hardened mix becomes almost like concrete, reshaping the terrain wherever the creature passes. Yet, the effect it leaves behind can be used by other species, especially those who understand how to direct it. On Tau Ceti F, intelligence evolved not through struggle, but through balance. And the most advanced species here embody this principle in every aspect of their biology and behavior. Dwellers. Dwellers are hybrid life forms, gaining energy both by eating vegetation and through photosynthesis. Over time, 
They evolved chlorophyll-rich cells on their backs, allowing them to absorb Tau Ceti's stable sunlight whenever they are at rest. Their metabolic efficiency means they rarely compete for food. Instead, they focus their energy on construction, cultivation, and connection. When a flumari, a floating foam island, descends, the dwellers transform it into a home. They survey the structure and use pheromone trails to guide bulge-limbed creatures into precise locations, especially where sand has already penetrated the foam. As the bulge-limbed begin to secrete their semi-liquid stabilizing compound, the dwellers control where and when the foundation solidifies. This turns the base of the flumari into a mineral-reinforced structure, allowing it to resist tides, wind, and time. But the dwellers do more than stabilize. They cultivate algae inside these chambers, using the foam's ability to retain moisture and filter light to grow nutrition-rich organisms. And they decorate. Dwellers are the only species on the planet known to collect and arrange shells. Some are pressed into foam walls for strength, others are placed in repeating spirals or mirrored patterns, perhaps for structure, communication, or even symbolic meaning. During rare moments when both of Tau Ceti F's moons rise together, Dwellers may meet beneath the semi-transparent foam canopy. These duo rituals always follow the same silent choreography. They remain motionless for long periods, sometimes hours, locked in posture, surrounded by shell patterns and bioluminescent algae. No hierarchy, no display of dominance, no direct contact, only rhythm. These rituals may be part of bonding, memory, or even a form of reproduction, though no one knows for sure. But what is certain is this, across habitats, generations, and distances, when the double moonlight returns, the ritual returns with it. The dwellers are not masters of their world. They are its gardeners, engineers, and memory keepers, shaping life not with conflict, but with cooperation, biology, and time. Tau Ceti F is not Earth, no extinction events, no great ecological resets. Life here evolved not to fight, but to persist. Energy is stable, light is consistent, resources are shared rather than seized. Intelligence emerged not as a weapon, but as a way to understand space, manage energy and nurture complexity. On Tau CDF, life grows upward, outward, and inward. It flows like the tides, rises with the foam, and glows beneath the moons.